Hi there, this is uh, chapter nine. Morgan was having something between a dream and a nightmare. She was standing outside a window to a small room. Not any room in Katie and James' house, but still familiar. A place she'd not been in for a long time. And somehow she knew that. A winter storm was blowing around her. She put her hand on the cold glass, and as soon as she did, she heard footsteps in the snow behind her. She turned around to see the fisher appear out of the blizzard. When their eyes met, he charged towards her. No! Morgan jolted awake, but the cold followed her. She curled the sheets around her body and tried to gather in as much heat as she could. <clears throat> Excuse me. Soon the remnants of the dream would pass and she would feel warm again. It had felt so real, and when that happened, she knew she'd felt stuck in the dream for a while before coming to her senses. But as seconds turned to minutes and Morgan felt more and more awake, she didn't feel any less cold. I've got the flu, she thought, and decided that she would get up and make herself tea. She checked the time on her cell phone just before three in the morning. She'd been asleep for only two hours. The nightlight behind her headboard threw a white halo across the floor and walls. Morgan left her phone on the floor and sat up. The hairs on her arms were standing up. She rubbed them vigorously. The only solution before making a nice cup of hot tea was to bundle up. She grabbed a thick hoodie from her closet, slipped on a pair of socks, and even, albeit reluctantly, put on the moccasins. It turned out to be a good choice. When Morgan opened the door and stepped into the hallway, she felt even colder. What? She whispered. The first thing Morgan noticed was that the door to the attic was open and all the cold air was coming from up there. Her heart started pounding. Oh no, she whispered. She rushed over to Katie and James' bedroom and opened the door. They were huddled together under their duvet, sound asleep. Good. Morgan shut their door quietly, then ran into Eli's room, right up to his bed. She threw the comforter off to find he wasn't there. She checked the rest of his room, refusing to believe that he'd done what she knew by now he must have done. He wasn't anywhere, not under the bed, not in the closet. There was only one place left to look. Morgan ran up the stairs, taking them two at a time to the attic. The door to their secret room was wide open. It had probably been left ajar and the wind from the storm had pushed it all the way open. The cold had flooded into the attic, down the stairs, and filled the second floor. It didn't look like their room anymore. It was more like an extension of what they had seen inside the drawing. Blowing snow had caked against the walls and built up from the floor to above her ankles. She peered through the swirling flakes to see the drawing stapled back against the sloped wall, which was clearly now a portal to the snow-filled world. She pulled her hood up over her head and stuck her hands into the hoodie's kangaroo pocket and forged a path through the snow to the opening in the wall. To her relief, the fisher was not there running at her, but Eli wasn't there either. All she could see through the swirling winds and whipping snow was a field of white, not even the forest on the horizon or the village. The storm had gotten worse if that was even possible. Morgan stuck her head through the portal and scanned the entire field, but there was nothing to see. An endlessly barren landscape. The wind was severe, kicking up snow and spinning it around in countless miniature tornadoes. She stared across the field into the storm for as long as she could stand until her skin got numb. During the briefest of moments, when the wind let up for a second, did she catch a glimpse of the village's lights. Eli, Morgan shouted into the world of white. She looked at the ground. There were no footprints, already snowed over. Come back, Morgan screamed. But even as she did, she knew he would never be able to hear her. The wind was louder than she could ever hope to be. Morgan could see only two options. Leave him there and wait for him to come back or go in and get him. The first didn't seem like a choice at all because what if he never came back? What if he was buried under the snow somewhere? What if he was still walking toward the village? What could he have left with to keep himself warm for this journey? Katie and James had planned to take him out shopping for clothes as winter approached, 
but they hadn't gone yet. Then a worse thought came to Morgan. What if Eli hadn't left on his own at all? What if the fisher had taken him, just as she had feared? Either way, this was her fault. She'd said what she'd said, and it had made Eli open the portal and go through. I'm sorry, she cried out, staring into the blinding white. There was only one thing Morgan could do. Plunge into the void and go after him.